Good morning, saints of God. Welcome to our virtual divine worship service this morning. It is an honor to come before God's presence as we celebrate with him. I now call the service to order. I will now invite the worship team from Roseau to come with the opening song. Thank you, Sister Dell. We can all attest to that. Showers of blessings every day. God has been pouring showers of blessings upon his children. Pour from thy windows upon us showers of blessing. It is a promise that can never fail. Thank you, Lord. This morning, as the worship team comes back to usher us into worship, give God what is due to him. Just worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Our praise will continue to rise. Our eyes will continue to keep turning to you, Lord. Because there's nowhere else that we can turn to. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you.
God who saves and keeps us. And that's why we can rest assured that you're able, you're more than able. Hallelujah. There is nothing, nothing he cannot do, nothing he cannot change, nothing he cannot turn around. What a mighty God we serve. There is nothing, no one that can be compared to him. He is king of all kings. He is Lord of all lords. He is the great I am. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He has been there for us before. He is there for us now and he will continue to be there for us. According to Romans 8.38, nothing can separate us from the love of God. No trials, no tribulations, no COVID, no demons, no fears, no worries, nothing. Always remember that nothing shall separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now I will hand over to Pastor George. Thank you very much, Sister Tanae, and a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Let me direct your attention to a passage of scripture which is found in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, 
The labor of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stores. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds' feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. Father, this is your word to us today. And I thank you for the opportunity to minister your word to your people. I ask, O oh God, as I speak your word today, that you'll give me clarity of thought. I pray that you'll give me a special touch, a special anointing as I proclaim your word. I commit myself to you because without you, I can do nothing. It is not by might, nor is it by power, but it is by your spirit, say of the Lord. So I commit myself again to you, commit your word to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to us today on the subject, living by faith and above your circumstances. Living by faith and above your circumstances. Little is known about Habakkuk, the character of our text, except that he was a contemporary of Jeremiah and was a man with vigorous faith rooted deeply in the religious traditions of Israel. The name Habakkuk means embraced by God. God embraced Habakkuk so that he could embrace and encourage others in times of national crisis. And so Habakkuk provides us with a beautiful picture of how to move from doubt to faith and to a seemingly hopeless situation to an elevated position in God. Today, I want to share three thoughts with you from our text. The first thought I want to share with us is that it is acceptable to acknowledge or accept the difficulty of your situation. Our text tells us that Habakkuk lived in one of Judah's most critical period. His country had fallen from the heights of reform to the depths of violent treatment of its citizens and also oppressive measures against the poor. Habakkuk was perplexed that wickedness, strife, and oppression were rampant in Judah, but God seemingly did nothing about it. So he asked the question, why would God allow the wicked to devour them, or the man, or the people who are more righteous than he? The Lord responded by saying to Habakkuk, It is okay, my son, to acknowledge the difficulty of your situation, but I want you to know that I have you covered. I have you covered because I am aware of what is going on. 
I am aware of what you are experiencing. And I want to say to you, Habakkuk, that your present situation, I am aware of it. And that means whatever you are going through, you should never allow it to determine what your future should be. Why? Because I will never allow the wicked to triumph over you and determine what your future should be. I want to say to us that God is saying the same thing to us. We too are sometimes in situation where we feel that God is taking too much time to act. We feel that God is so far that we sometimes want to do it ourselves. We want to do it on our own. As the children of God, I want to say to us that we should never think that God have abandoned us. We should never think that God have left us for dead and that we, we, we are like people who do not have a person who is concerned or someone who is in charge of us. First Peter chapter 3 verse 12 tells us, For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are upon the, uh, uh, or rather open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. In other words, the Lord is saying to us, let the wicked demean you. Let them uh, uh, castigate you and say all sorts of derogatory things about you. Bear in mind that they will eventually be defeated. I will not allow the, the unrighteous to, to ridicule you and to, to, to scoff at you and to mock at you because I know that I am able to take care of you. Habakkuk felt that God was very passive about the level of injustice meted out against his people. But God, God's response to him was, You are wrong, son. I am always with you. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 tells us, The Lord said, Be strong. Be strong and very courageous. Do not be afraid because of them. For the Lord your God is with you. He will not leave you. Neither will he forsake you. Yes, my friends. We are to leave. By faith. And not above our circumstances. God is bigger than your circumstance. He knows what your experiences are. He knows precisely what you're experiencing. And we can rest assured that the God that we serve will not allow the unrighteous to triumph over us. That's the God we serve. And I thank God today, and I want to announce to you this morning, uh, that today rather, that God is not asleep. God is not a, a God who takes a nap. He is always attentive to the cry of his people. Yes, my friends, it is all right to acknowledge the difficulty of your situation. But secondly, not only is it okay to acknowledge the difficulty of your situation, but in the second place, we must focus our attention on God rather than our circumstances. Many times when we are faced with situations, we tend to look at the problem rather than the solution. For example, Israel doubted the fact that they were able to conquer Canaan. What did God say to them? He told them, I have given you the land. It is yours. But what did they do? They, they, they actually went and spied the land, but they came back with a negative report and saying to Moses that, 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 that we, we are not able to possess the land because we, we, we have seen the, 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 the people that are there. And as a matter of fact, we saw the sons of Enoch. 
And these guys were like giants. They were huge guys. And, and, and the children of Israel, they, they saw the problem. They did not see the solution. They saw that the, 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 the situation that, that, that they faced seemed surmountable. And they did not realize that they are serving a God that is bigger than the situation. But I'm here to say to us today that we are serving a God that is bigger than the situation that we face, than the circumstances that we are experiencing. Glory be to God. Don't we believe or rather behave sometimes like the children of Israel? And I suppose it is because we were born with a natural inc inclination to worry. Anxiety is a normal response to the uncertainties we face in life. But I want to say to us that what we do with our anxiety and how long we allow it to live within us is the key. Worry, I dare say, have never changed any situation for the better, but rather for the worse. We need to understand, saints, that our Father always knows what's best for us. We should never doubt the knowledge of God. He knows precisely what we are experiencing. He knows exactly how we feel, how much we are hurting, and how much we, we are able to bear. And I'm saying to us that we need to learn to understand that our God knows that. And as such, He will take care of us. Jeremiah chapter 21, 25 um, chapter 29, sorry, verse 11, tells us that the Lord says, and I quote, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The international version says to give you an expected end. Yes, my friends, we are to focus on God and not on our circumstances. Sometimes we feel that the circumstances, the situation that we face is, is beyond God. But nothing is beyond God. It is beyond us. That's the reason why we need to look to God. And if we look at, take a look at what is happening in the world today, and I want to say to you that when, when God wants to get the attention of the world. He usually acts in ways that, that, that baffles the mind of mankind. Just take a look at what is happening in the world today. The whole world is shut down. What do you think that is happening? I mean, God is not the one who is actually doing it, but he allowed it to happen so that man would look to him. And I'm saying to us, when we are at our, weak, at our weakest point, we need to understand that we need to look to God. We need to trust God for His sustenance. We need to trust God for His deliverance. We need to trust God, glory to God, for Him to bring uh, to us, my friends, the victory that we are expecting Him to bring to us. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yes, my friends, we need to, to, to take a look at uh, the, 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 the situation. We, we need to, to rather look at, at, look to God rather than looking at our circumstances. He's bigger than our circumstances. The third point I want to bring to us, the final point, is that in order for us to receive that promise, we must operate in faith. What is faith? Hebrews 11, 1 tells us faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is clear to understand that if we are going to experience the blessings of God, if we are going to see God remedy the situation that we are in, we need to exercise faith in God. It is surprisingly amazing 
how we trust in the pilots to navigate us around the world and not trust God to supply the basic things that we need. Isn't this amazing? We are sometimes over 34,000 feet above earth. And we some of us are relaxed because we trust we have the confidence of the pilot that they are going to take us safely to our destination. But yes still my friends we do not have what the lord referred to as faith like a grain of mustard seed to believe in the ability of our god to take us through our troubles but not habakkuk anticipating the awful results of imminent babylonian invasion and destruction he was able to rest on the promise of god's provision and his protection and wait on his working in his spirit of worship hear what he says though the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vine the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls no food yet verse 18 says i will rejoice glory with the god in the lord i will joy in the joy of my salvation let me say to you it's an awesome thing when god's people can rejoice in suffering it 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 it, it speaks volume to us my friends and to our faith and our confidence our ability in god when we can rejoice when things are not going right it is always easy for us to be happy and to be in glee and and and, and to to rejoice when things are going good but what happens when things begin to go bad do the fig tree shall not blossom what does that mean it means do there be no fig on the tree and imagine in an age of no canning or refrigeration you have no fruit it's not a case where you can harvest the fruit process them can them and refrigerate them a note dry food and grapes were an important part of winter food they used to have some long winters and yet still the prophet habakkuk is saying to us that the situation looked bleak he says the labor of the olive shall fail meaning there will be no oil and oil was an essential part a very uh, important part of the economy and yet still he anticipated that there was going to be no oil and yet still he's saying though there is no oil though the economy is not what it's supposed to be or what we expect it to be yet will i trust yet will i prove god glory be to god that's what god wants us to be that's what god wants us to 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 the attitude rather that god wants us to have that though there be no grain that even though my friends uh, it it was easy for them to to store the grains at the time yet still it was not present and the bible is saying to us even then habakkuk was prepared glory to god to worship god to praise god to honor god in spite of that lack and lastly he said though there be no flock no goats no sheep no cow or cows he says yet the bible the word tells us habakkuk learned the lesson of faith 
and trusted God's provision regardless of his circumstances. Today, my friends, the, the, the world is in crisis. The entire world at that is in crisis. And our nation, Dominica, is also in crisis. The coronavirus and the unknown interruptions cancellations and social isolation seems far from over the the, the experts the the, the 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 scientists the medical professions the pro professionals rather they are saying to us they do not know when life is going to come back to normal oh glory to god my friends they, this speaks I mean, that is scary which means that the many blessings we love and enjoyed in the past might be mire for many months to come. Glory be to God. And as a result, my friends, there's a possibility that our circumstances will change. There's a possibility that many people will lose their jobs. And as, as a matter of fact, as I speak, there are thousands of people and even millions of people who have lost their, their jobs all over the world. People who do not know how they're going to feed their families, do not know how they're going to um, um, service their loans and, and pay their mortgage and things of that nature, my friends. That's the situation of the world today. But yet still God, uh, uh, Habakkuk is saying in spite of that, I'm going to trust in my God. I'm going to worship God nonetheless. I'm not going to allow that to prevent me from giving God the praise and the honor that is he deserves. Why? Because God is aware. He's cognizant of what is going on in the world today. And rest assured, my friends, that even though he may not take care of anybody else, glory to God, he will take care of his own. That's the God we serve. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, yet will I glory, yet will I praise, yet will I worship God. That reminds me of Job. When Job was uh, in, in, in the situation where uh, the devil had inflicted him with boils and sores and, and all the friends of Job had deserted him. Even his wife said to him, curse God and die. Job said, no, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will trust him, my God, because God gives good and God gives evil as well. And I will trust God in spite of my circumstance. This is how we need, my friends, to approach life. This is how we need to behave as children of God, that regardless of the situation that we are going to serve God, nothing is going to stop us. Glory to God. What a God we serve. And today you might be among those who might lose uh, uh, your job. You might be among those who may not be able to, to, to enjoy life as you used to. Let me say to you, it's not over. God has a better plan. He says, I know the plans I have for you. They are not plans to harm you, but plans to give you a future. Oh, when we talk of future, in other words, God is going to make it better than it was before. That's the God he is. And we need to trust him. We need to, to, to exercise our faith faith in him because he is well able. Oh, glory to God. Glory be to God. We must be careful though not to focus too much on our circumstances because when we become too close to our circumstances and so far from God, God seems very far. He seems very small. Why? Because, my friends, we, we are so overwhelmed with what is going on with us at the moment that all we see is the problem. All we see is what we are experiencing. But I want to say to you, your problem might be one of a marital one. You may be going through problems with your spouse, with your children. You may be going through problems with your neighbors. My friends, your things may not be well with you as it should. You may be going through a physical situation. I am here to say to you today that God knew long before that you were going to experience these challenges and he have made the provision to take care of you. Glory be to God. What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when, my friends, we have to trust God. That's when we have to put our confidence in him. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6 tells us that we have to trust God with all of our hearts. Lean not unto our own understanding, but in 
all our ways. Sometimes we, we trust God in some of our ways, but the word instructs us to die, to, to, to trust God in all our ways. And when we do so, we can rest assured that He will direct our path. In Joshua chapter 2 verse 14 to 16 we have a situation where Rahab the harlot uh, uh, her circumstance was changed because of her faith in God. Abraham's circumstances were changed because of his faith in God. I can think of many other uh, 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 examples in scripture where uh, people, the people of God's circumstance were changed because they put their faith and their trust in their God. Hallelujah. Our situation will not only change when we see God as being bigger than our circumstance, our circumstances, but we will, it will change only my friends when we uh, recognize that we are in the situation but at the same time we we can rejoice in the Lord knowing that he is bigger than our situation. Oh glory be to God. Glory be to God. This my friends the, the, the fact that Habakkuk could rejoice in times of crisis is one of the strongest affirmation of faith in all of scripture. This tells me that our God can be trusted. This tells me that our God is dependable. This tells me that our God is capable. And in closing, the word says he will make my feet like hinds feet. Meaning, he will make me, he will make me, me secure footed. He makes me to be secure. He makes me sure footed. To use the right terminology. As the dare and keep me safe. On the mountain top. My friends, you may be way down here today, but trust God, He's able to elevate you to a standard, to a level that you have never uh, been before, that you have never imagined. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, because He's able to do a seed exceedingly above and beyond what you can ever um, uh, think, according to the power that worketh in you. I say, praise God this afternoon. Praise God today that he is dependable. And so just as he embraced Habakkuk to be the source of encouragement to us, we in turn need to embrace the Lord so that we can face whatever comes our way in these times of uncertainty, in these times of crisis. In closing, Let's trust the Lord in spite of all what is going on in the world today. While we acknowledge the difficulty of our situation, we must focus our attention on God rather than our circumstances by exercising complete faith. Complete faith in our God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, O God, for the power of your word. We thank you that you, you are always looking over us. And that, O God, we can trust you today. I thank you for your word in Jesus' name. If you, my friends, have not trusted Jesus as you should, if you have doubts in God's ability to keep you, to sustain you in these challenging times, I want you to pray this prayer with me and pray it out loud. Dear Lord, I thank you for being my father. Lord, I know that you are capable of taking care of me. I ask that you will increase my faith, O oh God, so that I'll be able to trust you fully and, and put you or place you above my circumstances. Lord, I believe that you are quite able. And I commit myself, I commit my circumstances, my situations before you. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you are here and you, you are within the reach of my voice today, and you are not a Christian, 
I want you to know that God has a better plan for your life. He wants to be able to, 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 to sustain you. He wants to be able to do for you that, like he's doing for those who are his children. I want you to pray this prayer of repentance with me. That God will be able to treat you as one of his own. Dear Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power that is in you. And I ask of you that you will come into my heart, Lord, and save me. I confess my sins to you. I want to serve you with all of my heart. I renounce my sins. I give them to you. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your cleansing. Make me your son. Make me your daughter. As I desire to serve you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, this is all it takes to, to have a new beginning. And I pray that you'll continue to, to walk with God. I want you to be able to, to walk with Him and to trust Him because He will never let you down. Here is the number that you, you can call in case you need help. You can call us at 617-5160. Let me say to you, thanks for listening and God bless you richly.